Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to be giving you my honest uh, review about a brand new release that just came out last Wednesday from Boom Studios. This is going to be a spoiler review, so if you're planning on reading this issue, make sure to read it before you watch the video. Whoa, what? Hey, it's me. Keanu Reeves? Is that you? Have you read my new comic? Yeah, I already read it. I was about to do a review on it. Everyone needs to read my comments. Everyone! Ah, ha, 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 ha. Hey, don't worry. I think a lot of people are buying it. Get on with the review. That's right, guys. Today we're reviewing Berserker number one. This is Keanu Reeves' very first time writing a comic for any company, and he's co-writing this issue with writer Matt Kint. Art on this issue is by Ron Garney, and colors are by Bill Crabtree. The art on this issue was one of my very favorite parts of it. It was kind of like a sketch style of art, except still really detailed, and the colors popped and were pretty vibrant too, so... The art was solid, and uh, the writing was also pretty good, especially since it was Keanu's first time writing the comic. Probably a lot of credit can go to the co-writer too that helps him out though. Throughout this issue, I was kind of getting Wolverine vibes. Um, there's a lot of similarities. Both Wolverine and, uh, and this character, and this main character, are, bas are basically immortal and can heal from any wound. As you can see on the cover here, um, this main character is based off of Keanu Reeves, which is kind of weird. You wouldn't expect the person writing the comic to have the main character look just like them, but I think that most likely they're hoping this will one day be, be adapted into a movie, and then Keanu will be able to play this character. They, you, could, you could tell they're going for an R-rated action movie if it ever does get made. Um, so there was like excessive violence in this issue that I felt was kind of unnecessary and it did sort of take away from the comic how cinematic they were trying to make it seem. The issue really didn't have very much dialogue and it, it wasn't very plot driven which I can appreciate like I understood everything that happened in this issue but they did a good job it was very simple um, and the art contributed in a good way so that it was still entertaining even if there wasn't much going on. As for what actually happens in this issue, it's a rainy day and he's, uh, he's like brooding on a bench when he's picked up by a US military vehicle and then he's driven over to a helicopter. Um, he like suits up in military gear and has this squadron that he's with in the helicopter. Keanu jumps off of the helicopter uh, before he's cued to do so. It seems that he's working for the US, doing their dirty work and uh, taking out those who they tell him to. In the background there's like Spanish billboards, so I'm, I'm assuming they're in some sort of Spanish-speaking country, although they never say um, exactly where they are in the world. The squadron is tasked with assassinating the president of this country. This is where uh, the big fight scene that takes up the majority of this issue starts. And throughout the fight we see Keanu using uh, excessive violence against the guards. Um, which a lot of times is unnecessary, so he's very ruthless, and it's clear that he has some sort of superhuman powers. He's able to like punch through people and just take off their arms, so he's something more than human. Um, and throughout the issue, it seems like the government is giving him these powers. He's fed pills a few times uh, through the story, and I think these are enhancing his abilities. So Keanu works his way all the way down to the bottom floor where the president is supposed to be, taking out all of the soldiers uh, that are guarding the way. But once they reach the bottom floor, they find out that the president has already left. He's boarding a plane to leave the country. So Keanu busts out of a window, and uh, he takes over a military vehicle and is able to drive to the airport. He collides with the plane as it's about to take off, um, and there's a huge explosion that's caused. So Keanu is able to survive all of these things because of his immortality and healing that we see throughout this issue. He's able to take out the president, and his military teammates aren't helping much. He's doing his job um, in a one-man style. One thing that is different from Wolverine is that it seems that he doesn't actually have a healing factor. So he comes out really banged up with all these burns and uh, scars and, you know, battle wounds, uh, which aren't healing, but he's just able to survive that type of stuff. And he's flown back via helicopter to this U.S. military base in Washington where um, these like scientist surgeons uh, set him down on a table and in this surgery they use all of this high-tech equipment to basically stitch him back together. They even like take one of his fingers um, and put it in a little cup 
that says uh, like clone research or something like that. So they're working on cloning him because of his immortality. They're trying to work with his, uh, his DNA and like mass produce these super soldiers. But um, they have some very high tech next level technology that they're using and they're able to completely stitch back together Keanu um, so that he's pretty much back to normal and fully recovered. And then once he's all done with his surgery, um, he goes to a session with his therapist. The first half of their conversation was basically the background dialogue that we got um, in the whole fight scene that took up the majority of this issue. But we get the second half of their conversation actually like seeing them talk. We find out that it's been a full year since Keanu started working for this for the US government and he's basically struck a deal with them that if he does all their dirty work um, that he's been doing like we saw and in exchange they've been doing research to figure out how to take away his immortality he tells his therapist that quote i told you i don't want to die i just want to be able to die so he just wants to live his life life like a regular person um, and die of old age. By the end, we find out that he's been alive for 80,000 years since prehistoric times. There's the overview of everything that happens in this issue. Here's my final rating. I'm giving this a 7 out of 10. It had pretty solid um, and detailed art from Ron Gurney and uh, Bill Crabtree. And it was a surprisingly good writing debut from uh, Keanu Reeves. Obviously he had help from Matt Kent, but usually celebrities writing comics is pretty hit or miss, and a lot of times it just doesn't work out. Like I said, it seemed that at times they were, they were trying to make the comic seem a little too cinematic, in hopes of maybe one day making that uh, movie adaptation. And that actually took away from the, from the comic's potential a little bit for me. But I definitely still recommend it. Make sure to go pick it up at your local comic shop if you haven't already. Before we go, make sure to subscribe. It's the big red button right below this video. And you can also hit the notifications bell uh, that's right next to it. You'll be notified every single time I post a new video if you don't want to miss any. So that's everything from me today. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Bye.